Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Monster Hunter World. Today we got a new mighty beast in the form of a tempered Devil Joe event quest. We got Poogs here, which is going to come in very handy for what I'm going to cover in this video. But I have been reading the comments and there seems to be a prevalent issue in the Monster Hunter community with this particular event quest. Everyone keeps dying. So, I want to go over and make this video in an effort to provide knowledge to those out there to hopefully improve your success rate at completing this Devil Joe event quest so you guys can get those hero streams that you long for. We're going to be going over a couple different things in here and one very important thing that every single person should be doing if they plan on responding to an SOS and trying to help out during this quest. I don't care if you die or not, it is just a safety net so that way everyone can complete this damn quest without too much of an issue. Now, for those of you that do not know, we do have a new Devil Joe event quest. We'll get into everything else here in a second, but the, to get to this event quest, you're just going to go to your quest board, go to your events, and you're going to be doing Relish the Moment, which is a Hunter rank 50 or higher event quest to take down a tempered Devil Joe. Now this Devil Joe will one-shot you no matter what defense you have if you're not careful, especially if he's got a Jagras in his mouth. But anyways, we'll go over this set that I'm currently using right now, which is extremely easy to defeat Devil Joe with. Now you can use whatever set you want for the other tricks, um, but I am using a life stealing lance build right now. Now I do use the hunting horn and sword and shield support builds, uh, but no matter how much healing I was doing during the fight, people were still dying. So I felt like I needed to spread some knowledge. We'll get into that in just a second. Poogs is going to come in very handy as well. If you guys are curious what I'm using in this particular build, build I'm using a Royal Burst Life Stealing build. So we've got Valhazak Vitality, which will restore our health continuously throughout the fight if we do happen to take damage. We've got Tremor Resistance, that way when we're attacking, if he does happen to spam a Tremor, which Temper Devil Joe does incessantly, he will spam Tremor. Put Tremor Resistance on. I don't care if you lose a little bit of damage. Put some freaking Tremor Resistance on because then you'll be able to attack the entire fight. I cannot stress this enough. Tremor Resistance is incredibly helpful. Health boost level 3 just in case we do get smashed uh, by one of his one-shot abilities, which can happen. I, I usually dodge them, but better safe than sorry. Plus 50 health. When you eat, you'll be able to get, or actually when you use uh, max potion or whatever in the field or through your food buffs you can get to up to 200 health this way so we've got recovery up level three so that way when we heal we're recovering 30 percent more damage weakness exploit level three divine blessing three recovery speed two which you can put up to three and peak performance two because we're going to be at max health a lot with this particular build now that being said lance is also incredibly useful for this um the charge blade, anything with a shield where you can block is going to help you drastically in this fight. But really, tremor resistance is imperative for any class, regardless if you want to use any of these. Definitely put tremor resistance on. Now, that being said, we're going to get into the most important part of this video. The food buff that you're going to be getting in this quest. I don't care if you don't die, because if two other people happen to die and you somehow manage to get one shot, even if you're the most professional dodger ever, it can happen. You need to be eating this specific food buff. I don't give a shit about your plus 50 health from the fresh ingredients. You can eat a max potion, whatever. It's very important that you get this specific platter. You can still go for attack up large, defense large, or elemental resistance. I don't know why you would do that. I would go for defense up large in this or a mixture of both. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be getting a specific skill called Feline Moxie. Feline Moxie, whatever the hell you want to call it. I don't know why I call it Feline Moxie. It's Feline Moxie. Anyways, prevents fainting one time when you when damage taken exceeds your remaining health. This means if you do happen to get one shot, you will get a free cart. That's very important. If everybody in the party is doing this, you guys can theoretically die four times and then still have three lives left. So very important that everyone starts freaking doing this so that way you stop wasting all of our damn time because this quest already takes long enough as it is. Now, um, you're going to be using a voucher for this and that's where Poogs comes in. So I'll go over exactly how to get the food buff, but Poogie here, if you pick up the Poogs and drop them next to the handler every other quest, you can get a free voucher. I've also made a video on how to get vouchers really quick. I'll put that in the cards in the top right corner. I highly recommend farming that up now as well. Um, but anyways, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be using a voucher 
which will give you a 100% activation chance on your food skills. Now, as I mentioned, you can go up for attack up large if you so desire. Gotta get them deeps, bro. But I highly recommend going for the defense because it doesn't matter how much damage you're doing if you freaking die. What I'm doing is actually doing a mixture of each because I don't actually have enough of the ingredients to get the full defense buff. So I'm actually going for attack up small and defense up medium. Now you can do this however you want, but the main important part is that you're getting the feline moxie because that'll give you a free cart. Very, very important. Now you'll see here that we're not getting the plus 50 health and we'll get into that in a second. For those of you that are uneducated about the meal buffs, you can get that plus 50 health in numerous ways. Doesn't You don't have to get it from the actual canteen. And you'll see that we got the feline moxie, the attack up small and the defense up medium. Very important that everybody starts doing that for this particular quest. Once you're actually in the fight, you can go ahead and use a max potion or use mushroom mancer and use the mushrooms to actually get your health up to 200 if you so desire or 150 if you're not running any vitality gems. Um, and then it's just a pretty straightforward fight from there. Now you can block the majority of his attacks with the gun lance, including the laser breath. So this comes in very handy throughout the fight. Now you will take damage when blocking, but that's not so bad, especially with the life stealer. You'll be able to recover your health relatively quickly. Now, if Devil Joe happens to go ahead and grab a Jagras and use it as a freaking weapon, make sure to flash pot it out of his mouth, because if he does hit you with it, it's almost a guaranteed one shot. I don't even know if you can get one shot with the 200 health, but you can definitely get one shot with the 150 health with the Jagras in his mouth. So just keep that in mind and then murder him. Now, if you do decide to use the Gun Lance for this, just keep in mind that you cannot block everything. You'll see here that he's going to actually uh, recover from this and knock us back. And then I wanted to see how much I could block of this particular move. Uh, so I've go ahead and just try and tank it. And this last hit here will wreck your face, even if you are guarding. So just keep that in mind. Uh, try not to get in the way of that particular attack. The nice thing is you could still capture Tempered Devil Joe, and I highly recommend doing so because it'll reduce the amount of time that you have to fight him by about 20%. And I don't know if there is a difference in the quest rewards between capture versus kill, but so far every time I've captured him, I have gotten hero stream stones each time. Now I've gotten two once, and then usually I at least get one. I I've heard some from the comments that some people haven't gotten any. I don't know if they're killing or capturing, but I can say that every time I've captured so far, I have gotten in one. Now I also don't know if Lucky Cat will actually increase the rewards that you get. They are quest rewards so I imagine that using some of those other buffs will increase the amount of stream stones that you could potentially get from the quest. I've not been able to test it out as I'm not eating for that. I'm eating for Feline Moxie and I feel like if the whole community eats for Feline Moxie, everyone's success rate in this particular quest will drastically increase. Now, I've spent the majority of my time in these fights laughing at everybody getting tremored 24-7 because they won't use frickin' ground tremor resistance. Like, come on, people. It's not that hard. Yeah, you lose, like, four attack, okay? Having ground tremor resistance will drastically increase the amount of time you're able to sustain damage on the monster. Just frickin' use it. Oh my god. Anyways, vent over. Use some ground tremor resistance. Now, you can also decide to use blight resistance if you want. Um, but just steer clear of his laser breath, really. Um, and then make sure you bring null berries. You can get rid of defense down with adamant seeds, but tremor resistance is very important for this particular fight. He loves to spam it. I don't know if I actually showed it in the video, but he did, well, I had ground tremor resistance on, so you wouldn't have been able to tell. But anyways, if everyone starts bringing ground tremor resistance, maybe even some stun resistance, because if you do get stunned, it's going to suck, because chances are you're going to get killed. Uh, but anyways, Feline Moxie is definitely going to be huge. I will be live streaming this later using both my support builds and this Gun Lance build. And if everybody is using Feline Moxie in that, we should have a 100% success rate on this particular quest. I've already showed you how to increase your health. Make sure you, that you have Max Potions or a Mushroom Mancer set and just pop a Mandragoras. That way you can get that extra 50 health that you're losing from eating for the Feline Moxie buff. And um, yeah, that's about it. Make sure to check out the video for the vouchers if you're running low on those. But I hope you guys all enjoyed it. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to share your support and smash that like button. And that being said, you do not have to use the gun lance for this. It was just showing off you know, that it does do high damage and it gives you that little bit of boost with the shield. Now, obviously you can use the regular lance. You can use really whatever build you want. 
just having tremor resistance and needing for feline moxie will drastically increase your survivability in this quest but yeah hope you guys all enjoyed it and i will see you all in the next one don't forget to show poogs some love so that way you can get your vouchers yeah poogs are the best he deserves all the lovin's